Hello guys, welcome back. This is Rupesh and you are watching CBB Nerd video series on binary search tree interview related question series and this is question number third where we'll find the least common ancestor in a binary search tree. You would have seen or already solved this least common ancestor problem in binary tree. Mind this is a binary search tree, not a binary tree. So you should know what is binary search tree before looking into this solution. So as usual, binary search tree properties are like in left hand side, it will be the lesser than the root, I mean the node or in the right hand side, greater than the node. Okay. And that applies to each and every node. And this question is really very good because this is not like you have to traverse the whole tree in order to find that. And first of all, let me tell you what is this least common ancestor meaning. So the ancestor of two nodes, we are looking for two nodes ancestor and one and N2, you will be given these two nodes and they can be anything, maybe four and 22. So this is four, this is 22. So the ancestor, common ancestor for both is 20, right? So let's take another example. If you take four and maybe 14, then in that case, eight is the common ancestor because sorry, 14. Yeah. So for four and 14, eight is the common ancestor. So you have to return eight. So Basically where these lines meet up, this is the common ancestor, least common ancestor. This is also a common ancestor, ancestor for four and 14, but this eight is the least one. So the first one, whatever hits, when you traverse back towards the root, that is going to be your least common ancestor. That's what this 22 and four, the least common ancestor was 20, right? Okay. And let's say you're looking for four and 14. That's what I said, right? In the beginning. So the common ancestor is going to be eight, but how you will find it? See, it is very easy. When you reach here, you check whether this current root data is less than this and this, then you have to go to the right hand side. If your current data is greater than four and 14, then you have to go to the left hand side, meaning you will find this four and 14 in the left hand side of the 20, right? Because that's what the BST is. So you'll go here then. Now you will check, is this less than four and 14? No, it is less than 14, but not less than four. Then you will try for another one. Is this greater than both like N1 and N2? No, it is greater than four, but not greater than 14. So if any one of these conditions are failing, then you know that you are already standing at the LCA. Tricky, right? But it is really simple. Let's suppose uh, you're looking for 10 and 14. Okay. So forget about this. We have 10 and 14. So we'll stand here. Is this 10 and 14 less than 20? Yes. We'll go to the left hand side. Is this 10 and 14 less than eight? No. Is this 10 and 14 both greater than eight? Yes, it is true. Then you will obviously go to the right hand side. So you're standing here. You will see is this 10 and 14 both at the same time greater than 12? No, 14 is greater than 12, but 10 is not greater than 12. Then you will check for another one. Are they both less than 12? No, 10 is less than 12, but 14 is not less than 12. So you know that you're starting at the LC itself. Correct? Let's look at the code. So we have this code here we have. So this is going to be 20. And let's say we are looking for 10 and 14. This is a good example, basically. So we have 10 and 14. This is very base condition. We will see that okay, root is not equal to null. Then we'll go ahead. See, now roots data is compared with n1 and n2 for both less conditions. See, so then only you will go to the left, right? Because at some time you have to take the decision like whether I'll go to the left or right. Why would you go to left? Just because both the numbers like 10 and 14, both are less than your node, right? Currently where you are standing right now. If that is true, then only you will go to the left. And it doesn't mean that if you are not going to the left, you will directly go to the right. No, you have to test right also that N1 and N2 both are greater than my current node. Then only I'll go to the right one. So that's what we are checking here. So before going to the right, we are checking my roots data is less than N1 and less than N2. Then only I'll say that I'm looking for an ancestor in the right hand side of my current node. 
but this is not true we'll go to left because roots data which is 20 is greater than n1 which is 10 and greater than n2 which is 14 so 20 is greater than 10 and 14 we'll go to the left now this time we have 8 here and similarly we'll check this condition roots data is less than n1 and n2 yes it is less than 10 and 14 both then only you will go to the right hand direction so we'll execute this guy now before we executed this guy now we are executing this one and now we have 12 here and we'll see roots data is less than n1 and n2 no it is less than 14 but not less than 10 then we'll not go to right we'll do this one roots data which is 12 greater than 10 yes it is but greater than 14 no then this is also not true then we will not do this guy also we'll just simply return root and root is this 12 itself so we'll return here and this guy would return here and we'll return simple right thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next videos bye bye take care